What's up guys, Justin with the Podcast Dojo. A few weeks ago, I covered the history of the Kmart stores, and this week I want to talk about the history of Belk department stores. As I mentioned in the community tab, I am really enjoying doing company histories, and I think it's the breath of fresh air this channel needs. So without further ado, let's talk about Belk department stores. Going all the way back to Monroe, North Carolina in 1888, William Belk opened up his first department store using a $750 investment and a $500 loan. The store's original name was New York Racket in an attempt to attract customers. He would eventually convince his brother to be a business partner. Coming with that, the name would change to, from New York Racket to Belk Brothers. I wonder if it would have stayed New York Racket if the brother had not joined. William Belk used a few simple business practices to keep his stores alive. He would buy large quantities of items and sell them for a low markup. All merchandise was sold at its retail price with no haggling allowed. And customers could return merchandise at any time if they were not satisfied. Yes, these business practices seem very commonplace today, but for William Belk's time, this was quite revolutionary. In 1921, John Belk's nephew, Will Leggett, opened up a store with the Belks in Wilmington, North Carolina and his brother Fred Leggett would open up a store in Danville, Virginia. Now this is the perfect time to mention that in 1923, the Belk brothers began to hire and train men to open and run stores. Early partners in these stores would have their names added to the storefront. So I mentioned the Leggett brothers. Their stores would be called Belk Leggett. However, unlike other store partners, the Leggett brothers owned 80% of their stores and Belk owned the remaining 20%. Also remember the Leggett name, it will be very important later. During the stock market crash of 1929, sales did slow for Belk, however they found a way to make this work in their favor. As many stores and companies were folding, Belk acquired the defunct stores and opened 22 stores between 1930 and 1931. In 1934, Belk opened 27 new stores and expanded into Georgia and Tennessee in the process. Belk would also move its headquarters to Charlotte, North Carolina, as it was steadily growing. With the rise of other companies such as J.C. Penney, Montgomery Ward, and Sears, Belk cut costs in order to update their stores. So how did they cut costs? Rather than having quarterly meetings, they just held one annual convention. William Belk died in 1952 at the age of 89. However, he worked for the company as the head until the day of his death. After the death of William Belk, his son Henry took over the company as well as his other two sons, John and Tom. Six months after the death of William Belk, Henry Belk opened up the first shopping center location in Florida. This brought something new to the table. Fancy interior, music playing, and items out for self-service. Once again, commonplace now but was groundbreaking back then. Henry would continue to open up more stores without consulting his family, which resulted in lawsuits. The lawsuits were eventually dropped, but Henry, but left Henry to his Belk Lindsay company and made John Belk president of the company. John would eventually become chairman of the company, making Tom the president. The feud between them and Henry would last for the next four decades. By the late 1950s, Belk had 16 stores in 16 states with 325 locations. As the 60s and 70s progressed, Belk had to start making the change to shopping malls and adjust to credit card sales, although 87% of all transactions were still cash. Stores had to start carrying more upscale fashion brands and products as well. Tom was now the president and CEO, and he hosted the first fashion buying show in New York in 1983, leading to four major fashion designers competing for representation in the show. Though some stores retained their bargain budget items, most stores adapted to the new vision of more upscale items and located themselves in shopping malls and shopping centers. The company celebrated its 100th anniversary in 1988 by opening a new office complex in Charlotte, North Carolina. The 90s recession proved to be difficult as a result of the rise of discount stores. However, Belk was known to have a rock-solid foundation and survived it all, Leggett, who had been a longtime partner of the chain, was looking to merge with Dillard's department stores. This resulted in Belk taking control of the Virginia stores in the fall of 1996. Now remember when I said remember the Leggett name? 
Well, story time. As I mentioned in other videos of mine, Leggett was an anchor at South Park Mall in Colonial Heights, Virginia, which was also my childhood mall. Virginia Center Commons had a Leggett as well. Well, I remember Belk showing up to replace the Leggett wing in 1996 for about a year until Dillard's took over. In fact, after Dillard's moved in, I thought Belk had gone out of business until I was driving through North Carolina and saw a Belk store. If you had a mall with a Leggett in it, please let me know down below. A sudden shift in management happened at the start of 1997 when Thomas Belk unexpectedly died after gallbladder surgery, leaving his three sons to take over. This also makes the third generation of Belks to run well Belk department stores. They each had a strategy which involved cost reduction, consolidation of operations, and a special focus on inventory and the customer. There were currently 225 stores in 13 states in 1997, with half of them being North Carolina and South Carolina. The 112 companies involved with Belk merged into one company, Belk Incorporated. I also heard that a lot of this was so that way they wouldn't have to file a hundred separate tax returns. In the late 90s, a Belk National Bank opened in Lawrenceville, Georgia, increasing credit card businesses. Belk tried online kiosks in the stores to increase sales, but only had luck with more wedding registries. They did, however, launch an online store in 2001. Belk continued to prosper in the 2000s, even after the economy took a hit after the September 11th attacks. In 2005 to 2006, Belk acquired more than 90 Profits, McRae's, and Parizan's apartment department stores from Saks, giving them company leverage in Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. In 2013, Belk decided to celebrate 125 years by investing $800 million over the course of three years to fund improving their technology, improving customer service, their supply chain, distribution, remodel existing stores, and open new stores. 2016 marked not only the first CEO of Belk, but also the first CEO who was not connected to the Belk family. This new CEO is Lisa Harper. With a new mission to uphold the modern Southern style while focusing on Belk's rich history. The company announced a two-year plan in 2017 to open and refresh stores and invest $30 million into e-commerce and improve the mobile app. And that brings us up to date with what is happening with Belk as of 2020. I have to say, of all the companies I've researched for this YouTube channel, I was pleasantly surprised with this one. No scummy CEOs, bad business decisions, a very strong company indeed. I hope the current CEO continues to make the company flourish and prosper. Before we close out, tell us your experience with these stores. Did you have a leg in your area? Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something, until next time.